When the laser was first invented, there were some outlandish hopes for how it might be used. To melt dangerous icebergs, perhaps, or to vaporize the ink on typewriter errors. At first, these were impossible to accomplish. People began to ask, what was the laser for? But before the laser, there was the maser. Charles Towns pioneered this, amplifying microwaves by the stimulated emission of radiation. We already use masers in deep space communication and radio astronomy. But there's a problem with something called noise. Let's imagine an intrepid astronaut on Mars. She's 225 million kilometers from Earth and she just wants to call home, but there's no signal. She watches some Netflix, but it just keeps buffering. She has to check her work emails, but there's no Wi-Fi connection. When transmitting information, we are frequently faced with electromagnetic interference, background noise. The signal weakens over such large distances, and this results in a low signal-to-noise ratio. A high signal-to-noise ratio means one signal amplified without increasing the background noise. This is what masers do. Masers work by firing a source of energy, light, into a gain medium, in this case a crystal, making the electrons in the gain medium move to a higher frequency. The electron drops to a lower state, stimulating the emission of photons of light. This in turn causes the other electrons nearby to emit photons. Now our astronaut can happily call her family, and all is well. But the real problem is that masers are bulky, requiring large equipment and refrigerated rooms. But thanks to research from Imperial College and UCL, they developed a solid-state maser able to operate at room temperature. By making the maser small enough, we can integrate it with other technology and dream of new applications. Imagine the possibilities.